My name is Jeff Gould. This is an I Like That Story podcast, a bonus feature called Peace in the Valley. And today's topic is about tomorrow. Tomorrow does not belong to you. Well, as I've said before, uh, these podcasts are a little bit off the beaten path of my normal podcasts. I am doing them in my shop, uh, in particular next to my wood stove. Uh, I like the smell and sight and warmth and sound of a wood fire. In my shop is a place I come to relax. relax. I have a cup of coffee in the morning and I sit. And it is maybe what I would have called in the past wasted time, right? The alarm goes off and you hit snooze and then you hit snooze again and then you hit snooze again and then you jump and charge and rush into your day figuring out that, well, I'll I'll get to that when I get to On the way into work, you're saying, I'll figure it out when I get there. And then you're just answering Uh, mail and calls and phones and issues and hassles and then all of a sudden you get home and you just burst through the door and you just want to forget about it and you just want to you know watch a little bit bit of tv and you stay up late and you crash in the bed and then you start the whole process again in this time of the valley And the name of this series is Peace in the Valley because everybody has a valley. And that valley is an issue. It could be divorce. It could be the loss of a job. It could be sickness. It could be a a family circumstance. It could be your own oppressing uh, idea that it is not as it should be. And the day-to-day grind that I was talking about before has been taken from you and now you are just sitting and you are lost, and you are in this, this valley. Well, as long as we're in this valley, we, we might as well think about how we normally live our lives and ask if there might be a thing we might change. A friend of mine, uh, Jim Riefenberger is his last name, told me once that my day starts at 9 p.m. the day before. He said, I get up early because I have clients to meet with and I do not give them my best if I am not well rested. So I start preparing for today, yesterday, and it starts at 9 p.m. That sentence helped me understand that much of my life was taken from me as I pursued empty tasks of watching nameless shows or issues on TV that were entertaining, but also in some ways disturbing. And I would, they would cause bad dreams and anxieties that I didn't need. So I finally just decided that uh, TV was not my friend, that it was in fact my frenemy as my daughters would say. It looked like a friend, but it really was causing me issues and taking time from me and taking relationships from me as well because while I could have been talking to members of my family, I was instead focused on this this TV. So at any rate, that was one of the steps that allowed me to, on a daily basis, get up at 5.30, well rested, come into a place of quiet like this place here, and just be. And then I could look into my day and I could figure out what was in it for me, what issues faced me today, what fears were ahead, and I could give those fears away to God and let him take care of that. And then I could just do do my three or four or five things and then I would be done. And then what I was supposed to do today, I did. 
Today is where you live, not tomorrow. Tomorrow is none of your business. That's our focus here. Now, I'm not saying you don't do long-term sorts of strategies. I'm not saying you, you don't save money or you don't uh, get in shape or whatever that looks like. But those things are the sums of many, many todays. And today is what you get. And let go of tomorrow. Tomorrow, others will say, this will happen, or this will happen, or this will happen. And if you spend too much time listening to those people, they will steal some of the peace that you were supposed to have today and replace it with anxiety, and then they will steal your day from you. Now, uh, in this valley that you and I might be in, we know that this is real. But as we look back, we can also see that many times people predicted valleys for us that never materialized. When I was a kid, and maybe it's still out there, there was something called the doomsday clock. And you can imagine being a kid, like I was like in fifth grade, and the teacher talked about this clock that was put together by world scientists that said that when it struck midnight, there would be nuclear Armageddon as the Soviet Union and the United States would launch missiles. I remember him saying that, yes, the Soviets had enough nuclear bombs to destroy the world's population nine times over. And the United States only had the ability to destroy the world's population five times over. But then he said that our nuclear missiles were better aimed, so we might have a more efficient calculus. Hmm. It was not comforting. (laughs) The thought in 1950 was not if there was going to be World War III. It was when there was going to be World War III. And it was absolutely certain that it would be before the turn of the century. Now, It could happen. I'm saying that it didn't happen. There was supposed to be a nuclear winter. There was supposed to be another ice age. This was other things that were predicted. The ozone layer would be completely destroyed. I remember that uh, vividly being predicted. Uh, Make no mistake, I am a, a person who loves the earth. I believe we are to be stewards of it, and I'm dismayed at how we are not doing that job very well. What I am saying is that the things that others predicted for me would wake me in the middle of the night as a child feeling a sense of nameless dread that caused me a lot of concern. And that was not to be my concern. I guess I decided a long time ago on this philosophical question, and the question is this, did man create God or did God create man? I decided that God created man. And then I decided to stay in my lane and do what was available to my limited capabilities and allow him to do what was his his infinite capabilities capabilities. I heard a friend of mine at work a long time ago open up a newspaper and say, Jeff, I wonder what God's doing today. And he said it with sort of a wry smile, but I saw the wisdom in that. He is doing exactly what he wants to, has planned to, and will do. And all that's left for me to do is to live in today. When we don't live in today, we 
we steal from today. I, I think about the guy who was a Navy SEAL, who was, I never met him, it was an interview I saw, who was climbing the side of a cliff and he became crippled with fear and that fear made his muscles tense up and made his hands sweat and he knew, he knew that he could only stay there just a few minutes before he would lose his grip and fall. And the uh, trainer saw that he was crippled on the side of the cliff and he kind of repelled over and said, what's going on? He said, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And the instructor said, how far can you reach right now? And the guy said, I don't know, two, three feet. And the guy said, what can you reach in that two, three feet that's going to get you somewhere? And he said, I don't know, this, uh, this little outcropping right here? And he said, yes, and that's what you do. You cannot control anything beyond your reach, so just control what is in your reach. In this valley that you might be in, what is in your reach is your family. What is in your reach is your ability to serve them and love them and be kind to them, and teach them. What is in your reach is what you were made to do. You have certain gifts that are yours, <clears throat> uniquely yours, and a gift to you. And those one or two things that are on your list of things to do today are uniquely in that gift category. And then you do those things. And when you do those things, you realize that you have a certain sense of peace because you are doing what you were made to do. And it gives you a sense of peace that God is doing exactly what He will do. And tomorrow will come exactly as it should. And God will be there too in that day waiting for you. I will probably misquote this. Um, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. I look at the various flowers. They don't worry, yet they, they're beautiful. Look at the birds. They're flying around. They don't seem worried. Can you even add a second to your life by worrying? Can you even add a dollar to your income by worrying? No. If I misspoke that, my apologies to Jesus who said it first and said it best. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Jeff Gould. God bless.